time I'm making this video, we're getting uh, conflicting reports, and once again, we're over here playing the waiting game. You wait, and you wait, and you wait. And you wait, 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 and you wait. The thing is this right here, guys, is I'm showing you guys this whole uh, collage here of uh, headlines. Of Obviously, I'm banking on Donald Trump being arrested tomorrow or being, um, I don't know, maybe contacted tomorrow, indicted tomorrow, whatever the hell it is that's going on. Obviously, these people are taking a long-ass time to do so. And obviously, they still don't seem to understand the uh, the rule of uh, PR. Uh, my, my view about this is uh, I think that the heat uh, is on this DA. Uh, I think he's going to make a very sober decision. And I would not be surprised if he doesn't step back from the brink. And I'm going to get to you, uh, Dana and David, in a second. But I want to follow up with you. This thing, these people are so stupid. My God, are they dumb. This is what they don't understand. When you put... Seriously, I, I got to pause because I'm just flabbergasted. Google search PR 101. Right off the bat, a couple of the ramifications that you have here is you're going to have less trust in the federal government already. Okay, I already told you guys federal government wasn't, uh, wasn't your friend. But it's also a very, very big sign of a dying institution. And I think just about everybody in the world knows this. This right here is what banana republics and third world dictatorships do. They try to jail their opponents. We've been saying it so many times. But then again, though, when it comes to calling out the hypocrisy of the left and calling them out on their BS, they don't really truly care. As I've said before on multiple occasions, they hold you to a much, much more ridiculous standard than you will ever hold yourself. That is who these people are. I've been saying it for a while. This is who they are. Yes, gang, uh, Tim Pool is 100% uh, correct, as you saw in the second half of that video. Uh, no press is bad press. Then again, though, you might could actually spin that a little bit. You see, I don't think it's so much that it's no press is bad press. I think a lot of it depends on how somebody actually spins said press. Now, guys, this video right here is to talk about the ramifications of what happens if Donald Trump is arrested, assuming that he will be indicted tomorrow. Of course, I'm making this video on uh, Tuesday night, and it will be released on Wednesday sometime tomorrow right around lunch. Obviously, I'm going to try to release a few more videos per day. At least for the time being, a lot of things going on here. I try to get as many takes as I can out there. Obviously, the algorithm's kind of beating me up a little bit, so obviously i got to post a little bit more. But uh, we're going to be talking about a good deal here, and you're going to be seeing some additional information coming from other content creators that, quite frankly, made some points that I'm going to be kind of adding on to and kind of countering because some of these points are a little bit... Uh, I would just say there's been a lot of very, uh, a lot of very interesting things that have been said today. Now, gang... First and foremost, you got to understand that the New York District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, he kind of sort of campaigned on getting Donald Trump. The case he should always have them in a timely manner, but the timely manner was a year ago. That timeline is the 2024 election cycle. I think today, for an issue supposedly, like the lawyers say, allegedly, yes, amorous, and they're going to detain him. If that was the case, well, the whole world would know, because we are not sucking our thumbs, that it is so he will not appear on the electoral ballot. And if I say that is because it seems a fabrication of a crime, because they don't want him to be candidate. There it is. If you're going to arrest a president, there better be a dead body or a suitcase full of cash. Or as Kilmeade says, a suitcase full of dead bodies. This is one of the most twisted campaigns in U.S. history. A former president has never been arrested. The leading presidential nominee never been arrested. And this isn't just any old prosecutor. This is a far left prosecutor that doesn't want to lock anybody up except Trump. He campaigned on it. A lot of people are wondering, uh, whoever has this job, are they going to convict Donald Trump? Look, that, that, that is uh, the number one issue. I'm the candidate in the race who has the experience with, with Donald Trump. I was the chief deputy in the attorney general's office. We sued the Trump administration over 100 times. And What's... you believe it should happen? I, you know, I, I, I believe we have to hold him accountable. Alvin Bragg's guilty of prosecutorial misconduct, and he should be disbarred. And the timing's perfect, isn't it? No one's talking about Biden's Chinese bank records this week. No one's talking about Russia buddying up with China. 
No one's talking about the crime wave or the broken border. This is just a mugshot. Now, you saw Jesse Waters at the very end. Obviously, if we point out the fact that New York under his watch has been an absolute disaster, far worse than anything Bill de Blasio could have probably done. I know that a lot of New Yorkers are probably going to come in this comment section and say, you couldn't have been any worse than Bill de Blasio. Fact of the matter is this, right? the situation in New York City is pretty freaking bad. And the mere fact that you're moving misdemeanors over something that happened seven years ago up to felonies, which, by the way, still falls outside the statute of limitations. Yeah, I know a couple of libs on Twitter have said that it does not fall outside the statute of limitations because there's a provision. Uh, dude, I've seen that provision, and guess what? Even with that provision, you're still not within the statute of limitations. Now, guys, I've done two videos on this topic, okay? I did a, a video earlier today that came out earlier today, which I was talking about the DeSantis response to everything and why it was that the rhinos had this entire thing uh, incorrect and why it was they were pissing off the wrong base of support. And also, to go on top of that, I did a pre, uh, kind of like a video to what to expect afterwards. I'm kind of like just kind of summing up on... Uh, these parts so make sure you guys stick around for the full video also guys make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button uh so that way the youtube algorithm will pick up on the video and the video will take off to the roof also one more thing too there'll be a video on espn and the uh, layoff numbers that came out i'm just going to be here to kind of tell you that i told you so now with that there being said if you're new to this channel make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and uh, make sure you hit the notification bell so that way you guys are notified when the videos come out once again that algorithm is hell from time to time especially if you take a day or two off the thing is this right here we're charging Donald Trump with a crime that was supposedly not even really and truly a crime. Of course, he paid off. A, they're saying he paid off a porn star that, of course, he claims he never really and truly slept with. I'm going to tell you right now. I really and truly don't care if he was there with Stormy Daniels or not. Okay, from what I understand, the story that was given was that he paid Michael Cohen, his attorney, who eventually took a plea deal and said he paid Stormy Daniels. And, of course, You've been hearing a lot of people, one of the last people to come out here and talk about this was Robert Costello. Don't worry, we'll get to him in a second, who said that uh, Michael Cohen was lying. Now, like I said, the statute of limitations on this is 2016, and you've also got people out there saying that it doesn't matter what he did, we need to charge him with something. That was Jennifer Rubin. Don't worry, I'll leave the Tucker Carlson video in the description box because he had a video from two nights ago on this matter that I thought was very good to kind of show you exactly how, um, let's just say, morally bankrupt these people were. However, that right there being said, let's go ahead and give ourselves a bit of a, uh, an update on this situation. This right here comes from ABC7. Trump's attorney talks about, it. obviously, you're going to see that people are out there protesting, obviously, in front of Trump Tower, but uh, just pay very close attention to the very end. The loudest demonstration was organized by a small number of anti-Trump protesters in lower Manhattan this morning. Outside Trump Tower, tourists strolled along Fifth Avenue, and NYPD officers stood down, where a pro-Trump rally scheduled for 11 a.m. never took place. Instead, a handful of Trump supporters held signs. In Nassau County, demonstrators in cars staged a caravan. But by mid-afternoon, the large protests the former president had called for had failed to materialize. The grand jury was given the day off today as Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg and his team of prosecutors planned their next move. Yesterday, the jurors heard from Trump associate Robert Costello, whose testimony was intended to discredit the prosecution's star witness, former Trump fixer Michael Cohen, who's insisted that Trump used 2016 campaign money to pay off porn star Stormy Daniels. You think a guy whose mindset right at that moment is, a lie, cheat, steal, shoot somebody, whatever it takes, I'm not going to jail. Well, he went to jail, and now he's on the revenge tour. Aliyah Haba represents Trump in a civil case brought by the New York he Attorney forward. General. I think it was important. I was, I was very impressed by him. I think he did the ethical thing that he should do, and, and it, was, uh, it, it says a lot about their key witness. Trump predicted his arrest would happen today, but he remained in his Florida estate, still waiting for the grand jury to act. Despite the relative calm, NYPD commanders ordered all officers to report for work today in uniform, ready to be deployed to manage large protests. And they issued this warning to demonstrators. Firearm permit holders may not carry firearms at First Amendment gatherings, courthouses, government buildings, and other legally designated sensitive locations. 
A stern warning to demonstrators clearly aimed at protesters arriving from out of town. Again, the grand jury did not meet today. They are scheduled, however, to resume. You guys kind of find it weird that with all this talk about 6-1, yes, I have to say 6-1 because of the YouTube algorithm. Don't you guys kind of find it very weird that in order to find protesters on the side of Donald Trump, you got to go to Nassau County, you've got to go outside the city to uh, to find anybody who's going to protest on his behalf. Also, his, uh, his attorney, uh, she looks a little bit like Melania. I just figured I'd go ahead and throw that out there. Fact of the matter is this right here. I don't expect anything to occur in front of the tower itself. But then again, though, at the same time, though, you never know. There's not really that many Trump voters in New York City itself. However, if you go outside the city and you go to upstate New York, you will find a lot of pro-Trump signs. So I don't think you're going to see a lot of people protesting out there on behalf of Donald Trump. And as you guys are already seen early on in the uh, in the headlines that were posted, and don't worry, I'll leave the articles in the description box. Uh, and from what I've read and what I understand, it looks to me like what they're going to do is they're going to try to indict him. But of course, he's probably not going to show up for a week. Now, optically, how does this really and truly look? Well, Democrats, of course, are just looking for a mugshot. They're looking for something that they can uh, they can run on in 2024. They can't run on the economy. They're not going to be able to run on the economy. I mean, you had several banks recently crash. Doesn't that kind of tell you that the economy is going down the crapper? you got massive inflation. You can't run on anything. And as Jesse Waters will point out here in a second, which I'll show you here very, very soon, this right here is all going on at the time of uh, other crap going on in the country, stuff that, quite frankly, it's, it's almost like it's a great big giant distraction. And as I said in the previous two videos, it sounds like a little bit of a nothing burger. Now, the thing you have to understand is that this case against him is very weak. Michael Avenatti, you guys remember him, you know, the guy that Brian Stelter wanted to run for president, Stormy Daniels' attorney. He is even saying that the case is extremely weak. And if he is saying that the case is weak, then you probably do not have a case. Now, guys, I'm going to play for you guys one half of this clip from Alan Dershowitz. We're going to come back on the other side. This right here, of course, came from Glenn Beck. And then, of course, we're going to go to the other half of this clip after we intervene. A lot of stuff to get into in this video, so hopefully you guys will stick around for the full video. Any place to be in America. And it's not only the Justice Department, it's the New York City DA's office, the New York City Attorney General's office. The Attorney General of New York ran on the campaign of Get Trump. That's where I got the title of my book from. Her campaign, Get Trump. She promised to get Trump no matter what. Constitution be damned. Bill of Rights be damned. Uh, the rule of law be damned. Get Trump. That's the most important thing. We have to stop him from running. Of course, the irony is even if they indict him and convict him, he can still run. The Constitution provides for only you know, a, a handful of bases for running. You have to be 35. You have to not have fought in the Civil War against the North. And you have to have been born in America. And he satisfies all of those criteria. So he can still run. And this may backfire on, on Democrats who are abusing the law to get Trump. And I hope it does. And I hope that maybe the district attorney will listen to reason and not indict him, although Trump has said that he's likely to be indicted uh, tomorrow. You know, Justice Jackson once said that uh, any prosecutor can rummage through the hundreds of statutes we have and, and try to find something against anybody, not just Trump, not just Hillary Clinton, but you and me and your Uncle Charlie and your grandson. Uh, they can find something. And if this prosecution is allowed to go forward and culminate in the conviction, it will mean that they will start making crimes up against the average person who they don't like. Can you go, can you take us now, through? Really quick, Dershowitz is very, is, is, is very, very weird that we're bringing up Dershowitz. Dershowitz defended Trump in the impeachment trial, and uh, he voted against him twice. He voted for him in 2016, he voted for him in 2020. Now, guys, the reason why I'm bringing up Dershowitz, I'm splitting this up in half, is I want to explain something to you guys. Dershowitz is one of those true blue civil libertarian Democrat voters. I have been saying for a while that the voters that you would ultimately lose, that the Democratic Party would ultimately lose, are the voters that started with members of the far left that didn't exactly, how do I say, it was people like, say, Tim Pool and Adam Krigler and them, people who were actually Bernie bros. They lost them initially because Obama didn't actually do anything, and then they saw how crazy the Democrats were going. They said, you know, this is not my scene, so they decided to pull back. The second set of liberal voters that they were going to lose were moderates to civil libertarian types. The reason why is because the civil libertarian types, who in fact do vote Democrat, are not in favor of putting away political opponents. They're not in favor of this, but then again, though, this right here is who the wokesters are. They are, as I've said before, 
for the most part, they're just good old-fashioned children, but we'll talk about that more in this Campaign, video. rather than to avoid embarrassment with his wife and his family, his children, etc. They're not going to be able to prove that. But as the former chief judge of the New York Court of Appeals once said, a prosecutor can get a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich. Mm. And in New York, you can probably get a petty jury to convict a ham sandwich as long as his name is Trump. And so there is a possibility that he'll get indicted and get convicted. I think it will be reversed on appeal uh, because the law doesn't permit targeting of individuals and making up crimes. This is a Mickey Mouse crime. Uh, So they say that he paid the hush money in order to help his campaign, and therefore the payment was a campaign contribution. It's never been done before. They tried it once before on candidate Edwards, and it was a much, much stronger case. And of course, they lost in front of a jury. Um, But uh, it's never been tried since. And uh, that was a federal crime. This is a state crime. And uh, it's a shame that a a district attorney would abuse justice so, so greatly. And it, it endangers justice for all of us. So, Alan, where where is anyone? I mean, when we get to a place to where we're taking out our opponents, I mean, I I spoke to Mike Lee about this uh, with uh, Hillary Clinton and what was going on with Hillary Clinton. And he said, Glenn, once you start going after a opponent, you become a banana republic. The republic is just over. Um, because re- because retribution now, will. The thing I want to kind of point out is the very end when they were saying that once you go down a certain path and you start talking about locking up political opponents, then obviously you're going to have a problem. The difference is this. The thing is this right here though. Hillary Clinton had a lot of crap on her. Like she had some serious crap on her. You had Uranium One. You had the emails. God knows what the hell was in there. And something else too. And I need to point this out because in that actual clip, which I will leave in the description box for you guys. There is something that I noticed there, and the thing that I noticed was this right here. Glenn Beck did not, for whatever reason, he did not want to bring up 2012, 2013, 2014. We found out the Tea Party groups and Republican groups, especially on the local level, were being targeted by the Obama DOJ and the Obama IRS. It sounds to me like the political persecution began a long time before this right here, or at least a long time before Hillary Clinton, which, by the way, was not persecution, we were just simply investigating exactly how deep the rabbit hole goes. In the case of Donald Trump, on the other hand, they've been after him ever since the start. They've been after him since 2015. You see, what happened in 2015 was he came down to the escalator. They took him as a joke. They thought he was going to ruin the Republican Party. Then in 2016, Hillary Clinton thought it was a good idea to make him a Pied Piper type candidate. And then he ended up absolutely humiliating her. And of course, ever since the that night in 2016, they have gone out of their way to completely destroy his presidency, to undermine him, to make him completely illegitimate. And now that he's been out of the office, they don't want him to run again, as you guys are seeing right here. There's a lot of polling, a lot of polling data that came out recently where Donald Trump is, in fact, surging. He's got the nominee in hand, so they figure, okay, well, we don't want to see this type of momentum again. Maybe we'll try to arrest him, which, by the way, this is, and I'm going to be leaving this video here from Greg Foreman in the description box as well. The idea is to try to maybe pin this to another case in Georgia, which is also a bit of a nothing burger. This far is not exactly the case, the place you want to start. The idea is to try to keep Donald Trump in court over the next two years. However, what these people don't seem to understand is that the more and more and more you keep him in the public's eye, the more and more press you give him, the more popular he is going to get. And after a while, people are just going to think it's a good old-fashioned witch hunt. As Chris Rock told these people this past weekend. Uh, before I start... Uh, talk about Adam to CNN people. You guys really going to arrest Trump? <laughs> Do you know this is only going to make him more popular? It's like arresting Tupac. He's just going to sell more records. <laughs> Are you stupid? <laughs> I don't want to make a controversial figure any more controversial. Okay, and as I said before, you've got a lot of civil libertarian types that are probably going to stay home on election night 2024. Like I said, Trump's not going to gain too many people from the left. However, what's going to happen is that the Democratic Party, of course, as I've said before, are for the most part a bunch of incompetent fools. And when you've got incompetent fools in charge, they can't get their own agenda in. Remember when I told you guys about the whole Ministry of Truth, Nita Jankowitz? I told you guys that it would fail, mostly due to the fact that these people were absolute idiots. 
it's funny how it was that my platform was so small, but it was Tucker Carlson who pointed this out like four or five days after I pointed out that it would fail. Funny how that crap actually works out. But the thing is this right here. These people are incompetent fools, okay? So I don't suspect that they're going to get anything if they do get an indictment. They probably won't even be able to prosecute the case against him. And even if they did, dude, what are you going to do? You're going to lock him up with the Secret Service? You're going to build a brand new prison? At the most, the only thing that's going to happen is he's going to end up paying a fine, and you're looking, you're sitting there looking there with good old-fashioned egg on your face. Then I have to go to the guy who I've criticized a lot from my side, Mr. Ben Shapiro. Now, granted, I was down on him the other day and still am. However, even somebody who's critical of somebody else can admit that somebody can make a very good point. Let's go ahead and roll this. Tuesday, we don't know whether that is true or not, but the political impact of a Trump arrest would be absolutely great for Donald Trump, actually. Donald Trump lit the fuse. He lit that rocket. And now we are going to explore whether, in fact, Donald Trump will be arrested tomorrow. So Donald Trump, over the weekend, he announced on Truth Social that he was about to be arrested imminently. He put out a statement that said, quote, now illegal leaks from a corrupt and highly political Manhattan district attorney's office, which has allowed new records to be set in violent crime and whose leader is funded by George Soros, so far all true, indicate that with no crime being able to be proven and based on an old and fully debunked by numerous other prosecutors fairy tale, the far and away leading Republican candidate and former president of the United States of America will be arrested on Tuesday of next week. Protest, take our nation back. Okay, so he's announcing there's still witnesses who have to testify before that New York grand jury. So the highest likelihood at this point, just from a, a pure procedural standpoint, is that Donald Trump heard a rumor from a friend of a friend and that friend of a friend said, you're going to be arrested on Tuesday. And Trump, not having any sort of filter, just went directly to Truth Social and put that out there. But we have no other corroborative information that he will, in fact, be arrested on Tuesday. Now, that's not to say he won't be arrested. He could certainly be arrested on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the following week, right? Anytime that could happen. And again, Alvin Bragg in, in New York, the DA there, who is, in fact, Soros elected. He's a person who's funded by George Soros, a very left-wing prosecutor. He's sort of implied that, an indictment is on the table for Trump in the near future. But this set the entire world ablaze, obviously, because when the former president of the United States and the current frontrunner in the Republican nominating race announces that he is likely to be arrested by a hardcore Democrat prosecutor in New York over a crime that was allegedly committed back in 2016. And you may have checked your calendar recently. It is, it is now 2023. And the statute of limitations on a misdemeanor in the state of New York and the statute of limitations on a New York felony is five years, which prevented this thing in 2021. And the only way to extend beyond that statute of limitations is to somehow hook Trump's behavior from 2016 into a federal campaign finance felony. That would be the only theory under which you could do this sort of thing. This starts to look really dicey in the first place. And it also does look politically motivated because we've had too many prosecutors who've come out and they've said that we are we are going to get Trump. Right? We had Letitia James, when she took office as attorney general of New York, officially say, like in her opening statement, we're going to get Trump. We're going to go after him, which, by the way, is not how you go after crime. The way that you typically go after crime is you find a crime and then you prosecute the person who committed the crime. You don't find a person you would like to prosecute and then you figure out which crime they have committed. But it seems like there are a lot of prosecutors out there who have, who have done this. Well, an arrest might counterintuitively be kind of good for President Trump, but you know it's always bad for you big tech grabbing your data. Here is the thing. All those big tech services, the ones who say they're free, they're not really free. They're I mean, grabbing your data. It's funny how it is that the Daily Wire, now that we know that the Daily Wire, uh, they kind of punish you when you work for them through big tech. They kind of do big tech's bidding. And yet, Ben Shapiro is still advertising big tech security. It, it's, kind of, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny to me. Very, 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 very weird. And of course, I can't impersonate him right now. But Ben is actually right. This right here falls outside the statute of limitations. The only thing you're going to do is just give this guy more and more free press, and he's just going to end up getting reelected, probably in a landslide, as I mentioned in the previous two videos. I'm not saying he's going to get 538 electoral college votes, but the guy is well on his way to winning, <laughs> winning the election in 2024. Now, why is this the case? Well, people see stuff like, oh, I don't know, maybe his... 10-point plan against the deep state, and maybe they might like it. My plan to dismantle the deep state and reclaim our democracy from Washington corruption once and for all, and corruption it is. First, I will immediately reissue my 2020 executive order restoring the president's authority to remove rogue bureaucrats, and I will wield that power very aggressively. Second, we will clean out all of the corrupt actors in our national security and intelligence apparatus, and there are plenty of them. 
The departments and agencies that have been weaponized will be completely overhauled so that faceless bureaucrats will never again be able to target and persecute conservatives, Christians, or the left's political enemies, which they're doing now at a level that nobody can believe even possible. Third, we will totally reform FISA courts, which are so corrupt that the judges seemingly do not care when they are lied to in warrant applications. So many judges have seen so many applications that they know were wrong, or at least they must have known. They do nothing about it. They're lied to. Fourth, to expose the hoaxes and abuses of power that have been tearing our country apart. We will establish a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to declassify and publish all documents on deep state spying, censorship, and corruption. And there are plenty of them. Fifth, we will launch a major crackdown on government leakers who collude with the fake news to deliberately weave false narratives and to subvert our government and our democracy. When possible, we will press criminal charges. Sixth, we will make every Inspector General's office independent and physically separated from the departments they oversee so they do not become the protectors of the deep state. Seventh, I will ask Congress to establish an independent auditing system to continually monitor our intelligence agencies to ensure they are not spying on our citizens or running disinformation campaigns against the American people, or that they are not spying on someone's campaign like they spied on my campaign. Eighth, we will continue the effort launched by the Trump administration to move parts of the sprawling federal bureaucracy to new locations outside the Washington Swamp. Just as I moved the Bureau of Land Management to Colorado, as many as 100,000 government positions could be moved out, and I mean immediately, of Washington to places filled with patriots who love America, and they really do love America. Ninth, I will work to ban federal bureaucrats from taking jobs at the companies they deal with and that they regulate. So they deal with these companies, and they regulate these companies, and then they want to take jobs from these companies. Doesn't work that way. Such a public display cannot go on, and it's taking place all the time, like with Big Pharma. Finally, I will push a constitutional amendment to impose term limits on members of Congress this is how I will shatter the deep state and restore government that is controlled. People can obviously see. These are things that people can get behind. And as I've mentioned on several occasions before, if you have the 2024 map, which has roughly 12 to 13 Democrat seats that they're going to pay to defend, it's very possible with a turnout machine like Donald Trump that he could get a good portion of that done. As I've said on multiple occasions, if he runs for president in 2024, he can only serve one term. But if he's got the Senate and he's got the House, he's got one full bird reform term. And right now, we are a nation in desperate need of economic, energy, military reforms, foreign policy reform, and, oh, yeah, that's right, as you guys can see, institutional reform. He can do a lot of damage in those four years. Maybe that is the biggest reason why I'm so hawkish to him for 2024. However... I got to leave it to Tim Pool because Tim Pool actually made some very, very interesting points. Because you see, Tim actually works in the media. He works in a little bit more independent media. And even though I got some disagreements with him, he does make some extremely good points. You see, Politico put out this piece earlier today talking about how it was that Donald Trump were not getting any additional votes. However, anybody, and you know, like I said, I get on Tim about not having any common sense, but he definitely proved himself to have a little bit here. Pay attention. Additional vote. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard written. Alexander Burns, this is very, very dumb. Of course it will earn him votes. Are you nuts? First, listen, you mean to tell me you think that Trump's voters, he will lose voters because of him getting arrested? What, in what world would the people who already support the guy turn their back on him because he's arrested on some garbage charge? That makes no sense. Trump will not lose a single vote. Now you say it won't earn him a, it won't earn him a single additional vote. Why would it not? It's going to make him the most prominent figure in the world overnight again. And do you know what that means? 
It means there's going to, it's the stupidest thing. These people are so stupid. My God, are they dumb. This is what they don't understand. When you put, seriously, I, I got to pause because I'm just flabbergasted. Google search PR 101. There's no such thing as bad press. There will be, let's say, 1 million people sitting in front of their TVs, just a hypothetical number, watching the news. And here's what will happen. The majority of them will hear Donald Trump is arrested, blah, 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 blah. And you know what? Maybe those people are a mix between his supporters and a mix between his detractors, and they're all going rabble, rabble, rabble. And then there's going to be some guy who's sitting there eating barbecue chips, hanging out with his family, passively listening. And then they're going to go, what, what, what was that? On? What was that on the news? What did they, D- Donald Trump something? What was that about Donald Trump? You, did you see it? No. What, what, you voting for Donald Trump? I didn't vote for him last time. Really? Yeah, I didn't. I, I, I didn't really think about that. I might. I mean, the economy is pretty bad. I might vote for him in, uh, next time. He's running, right? What they don't understand, my point here, is that not what, 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 what these people are so stupid. I, w- I want to say it again. They are so stupid. They think every single human being who hears the news hears it exactly in the same way. That every single interpretation will be identical. That's physically, mentally, psychologically impossible. Some people. He's right. People are going to think about the economy. People, guess what they're going to think about? They're going to think about all the figures that walked around with handcuffs and how they got more and more popular as a result of this. So what are the ramifications of this entire ordeal? Well, number one, you're going to lose a good portion of your own civil libertarians. It's still a good section of your base, especially inside cities, even though the cities are already blue. However, I do pity it for those people because as they continue to talk about CW, you will find out that the violence, once again, is blue on blue. However, at the same time, though, these are some of your more wealthier established personalities. And if they're not supporting you, then I guess you don't have the additional person to lead the additional voter. As far as it being one voter, two voter, three voter, I wouldn't say much, but it does eventually add up. Who else do you eventually lose? You lose the person who is obviously... Maybe the person who might have voted for Joe that voted for Trump in 2016. Maybe they say, oh my God, it was a great big giant witch hunt after all. Maybe they come out and support him. You see, you're only adding to his vote total in 2024 with every action you do. I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to make this a bigger freaking case. But at the end of the day, it's not going to work because as Dershowitz actually outlined in the previous section, the man can still run for office and possibly still get elected, which I'm pretty sure he will now. Now, to liberals. To libs, let me go ahead and throw something out there at you guys, all right? I want to go ahead and say this, because this is probably where I'm going to end the video at, and I want you guys to pay very, very close attention. There's really only one reason why you were able to win in 2020, okay? Now, we had the pandemic, and of course, we had the hunt. hunt. I can't actually say it out loud. I had to say it very, very weird. But there's really only one reason why you won. Trump got 74.2 million votes, all right? It took a lot to get you over. It took everything in the world from... Anybody who was a moderate, anybody who was an independent, anybody who was far left. It just basically took everybody in the world to take this quote-unquote beast out, okay? Now, I want you to think about something really quick. Of those 81 million votes, I would argue 4.5%, 4.6%. If you add them both together, you get roughly 9.1%. This is where it was in several different polls of people saying, look, I wouldn't have voted for Joe Biden if this were not happening. There's a lot of people who tried to change their vote in some of these battleground states who were not allowed to. I'm just pointing out the fact that there's probably anywhere between 9 to 13% of your vote from that election cycle who voted for Joe Biden for one reason and one reason only. A lot of these people lived in these states that had Democrat governors that weren't locking up, so they figured, okay, maybe if I vote for Biden, maybe the thing will change. Maybe everything will go back to normal, and maybe I can get back to work. Maybe this entire thing was not a good idea. That voter ain't showing up in 2024 for you. Some of them will probably vote for Trump. Oh, wait, that's right. We have gains in the Republican Party within the African-American and Hispanic communities. Not to mention the fact you have a major, 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 major set of Democrats who don't want Joe Biden to be the nominee again, but by the way, may be forced to have no choice but to have this uh, this rotting corpse as their nominee again in 2024. They got to throw it back over. They don't want him as their nominee because the Democrat bench is so horrible. We've already seen what Kamala looks like. Bernie's already cucked. Elizabeth Warren is cuckoo, and you really don't have anybody else. So, 
What does that leave next? Oh, that's right. That leaves the radical far left that doesn't think that Joe Biden did enough. You know the voters who think that 51 votes in the Senate is a mandate and you can actually get legislation done with that. Yeah, those voters there. That's about 4 or 5% of your, that's about an additional 4 or 5% of your vote within the overall electorate. About 11% of your base. Oh, wait, that's right. You also have the college types that vote if you are not interested in voting in 2024 because you've made their life a living hell and now you've bailed out the banks. Man, that Democrat base in 2024 is going to be pretty freaking small. Meanwhile, Trump gets a bunch of swing voters. He gets the added voters that come from each other base in the country. Some of them, by the way, are former Democrat voters. It looks to me like, yeah, he'll win in 2024 in a major landslide. And you guys just ensured it with this entire thing. So, from John Claymore, a.k.a. Paul Lofton, I want to thank you guys, the Democratic Party. I want to thank you guys, the New York media. I want to thank you, Alvin Bragg. And I want to thank all you woke little children for giving us Trump 2024 on a silver platter. The man's going to win. He's going to win a major landslide. And also, one more thing to all the SJWs, piss the hell off. Guys, John Claymore here. If you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign up in the comment section. And I'll, oh, that's right. Let's also not forget about the lack of trust in the institutions because I remember telling you guys, Government's not your friend. See you guys later.